feel the peace, the peace of God. Standing in a, in a stairwell at the shepherd's home in downtown Atlanta, Jesus was in that stairwell with Betty. And the Lord's been with them all these years. See, when everything's going good, it's easy for me to brag on God. But God doesn't really need me to stand up for His glory when everything's going fine. Everybody's going to say, hey, Sage, everything's all right in your life. But when everything starts falling apart, that's when the devil tries to change everything about you. But don't let the devil change you. And don't let this world change you for the worst and the weakest. Let the word change you for the best and the smartest and the strongest. Are you understanding that? So it's your choice, my choice, which way we're going to go. Who is what God is? And yet they changed his name to Meshach, the likeness of Aku, the old Babylonian moon god. And then they looked at Ahazariah, and, they, and his Hebrew name meant the help of Yahweh, or the Lord will help. I look to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. And they changed his name to Abednego, servant of Nebo, which is a Babylonian god that has to do with wisdom and literature. <laughs> so they knew these guys were prodigies. They knew they were very intelligent. God had blessed them up one side and down the other. So they put them in this program to reappropriate their, reprogram them and to take them away from Hebrew to Chaldean, take away, change their clothes, change their dress, changed everything in the world that they could possibly change about these boys. But yet there's three truths about these four young men that she's going to put up on the screen for you right now. They did not dine at the Babylonian buffet. <laughs> Daniel said, look at verse 8. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine. And it proposed a 10-day thing. You just give us four vegetables and the purest water you can and let ever, all these other prodigies and all these other reappropriated people that you're trying to make government officials and give big jobs and all. You know, look, you might have burned God's house down in Jerusalem, but you didn't burn God. You didn't, get a, you didn't do away with God. He's still God. We're still going to pray. We're still going to believe Him. We are still the people of God, every bit as so as we were in Jerusalem lamb here in Babylonia we are still the people of God and we are not going to dine at that Babylonian buffet and look after 10 days their countenance appeared I love this and underline it in your Bible verse 15 Daniel 1 they were fairer and fatter <laughs> than all the rest of them. I want you to know, honey, this old world is on a downhill slide and they're going to an awful place. We might be on an uphill climb, but God's with us helping us climb and we're going to that city whose builder and maker is God. I'm telling you right now, we are what we have in Christ is fairer and fatter than anything this old world can offer. What the world and the devil will offer you are things that are depreciating, things that are demeaning, things that are destroying, and things that are filled with death. But God will offer you that which appreciates. You're going to get out of these troubles one of these days. Betty, I promise you, and Danielle, your dad, one of these days, he will have glorified legs running up and down the golden thoroughfares of that city. We're on our way to a better place. And on this journey, we can be personal representatives and ambassadors of God no matter where we are. If it's singing at the temple in Jerusalem, the house of David and Solomon, but one of these days, things are going to change. And we may not be so happy in this world because this world can get hostile and change without notice. One phone call, you'll never be the same. One event, you'll never be the same. This world is fickle. It's uncertain. It's unsure. But the Word of God remains sure no matter what we face. And let the aging process go ahead and get a hold of me. At least I've made it to 65.
alive. I've buried thousands of people through the years that never made it to 50. I've buried a bunch of them and didn't even make it to 10. I've buried a whole bunch of them that I had to carry the little casket in my hand and lead the little broken-hearted young mother and daddy to the graveside. Death is certain and common and cruel. But 2,000 years ago, death got conquered. And one of these days, death's going to have to let loose of all of us and we're going into eternal life. So as we make this journey, yes, indeed, we're going to have a lot of critical settings that we face. And these young men, 16 years old, you talk about a critical setting. But they looked at that meat, Ronnie, on that plate, and they said, mm-mm, can't do that. They looked at all that intoxicating wine. They said, we can't do that. To everybody in here, whether we're young or old, the devil in this world will set a buffet out here and it may smell good and look wondrous, but don't you dare stick your legs under the devil's table. You stay faithful to God. Now look on over in chapter 3 and verse 12. Here's all these people. Let me tell you something, friend. This world not going to be your friend. The people of this world are not going to be your friend. They told Nebuchadnezzar, they said, look, and really in, in, in secular history, this particular Nebuchadnezzar, and there was different ones of them, the Assyrian Empire, Babylonian Empire, you history people know all about that. But this particular Nebuchadnezzar was the true first world emperor. This cat ruled it all. Now some of the rest of them, even the Caesars of Rome. And even in the Medes and the Persians and the Greeks and all the rest. Nebuchadnezzar had a, at that time a worldwide empire. Somebody said, who's your God? You, you, you need a, a central God, Nebuchadnezzar. You've taken over every country. You've overthrown everybody. Even the God of David and Solomon. You ransacked his house, burned it to the ground. Brought the descendants of David and Abraham and Isaac and Israel uh, into captivity. You need a God. He said, well, and somebody said, make yourself. Of God, we'll make a big golden image of you and we'll put it up on the plains of Dura and we'll let all the VIPs in the government and everybody else come. We'll dedicate it and you'll be God. Boy, I'll tell you what, a lot of times, listen to this little thing right here. When you hear people wanting to save the world, mark her down. That's just the mask. They want to control the world. We need some wisdom and cunning like Daniel and Hananiah and Michelle and Hazariah had. And the world needs to know we're not Belteshazzar. We're not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's not our name. We are Christians. Birthed of the Word of God. Sealed by the Spirit of God. Headed home with God. And right now we're servants and soldiers and workers for God and with God in this old world. So they erected that big old image out there and they said, Now, when you hear the music, there's the band. Don't you dance to the Babylonian band. They didn't. They didn't dine at the Babylonian buffet. They didn't dance to the Babylonian band. When you hear all these instruments start up, everybody bow down. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that was their Chaldean names. They stood up. They might have had a Chaldean name, but they had a Hebrew heart. Well, glory to God, I might be in this old world, but I'm not up. Of this world. It's what Jesus said in the intercessory prayer of John 17. Every one of us who are saved, yes indeed we're in this world, but yes indeed we are not of this world. So they stood right there and sure as you're born, here goes the long tongues tied in the middle and loosing both ends. They run down there to the front. Oh, you got three that didn't bow. Three didn't bow. I want you to know if they're talking about you, they're talking about me. And if they're talking about me, they're talking about you. Your hope's not in this world. Your real true friends are not in this world. Your real true friends are friends in the Word. And the best friend you'll ever have is Jesus. And whatever you do wrong, He'll talk good to you to His Father. He'll say, listen, uh, I know Ralph did this or James did this or whoever did this. But He'll say, now, Father, you know I took care of that for them on the cross. I done paid for that. And if they'll just trust me. Ain't it unusual that when people need the church the most, that's when through the years historically we've thrown them out. Oh, they don't pay their bills on time. We'll throw them out. Well, you rascal, you, your credit score is probably lower than the one you're talking about. 
They did this, they did that. We don't like them. We can't have them around. My Lord in heaven above, Jesus, let us know your will today. It's we're to love the unlovable. We're to give help to those that are down. We're not supposed to uh, push them on down. We're supposed to try to pick them up. There's what people do. Oh, they didn't bow. So they didn't bow down. You know your law. They got to burn up. Now go back with me to chapter 1. These three. Hananiah, Michelle, and Hazariah, they were in this massive government program to be reprogrammed and retrained and then assimilated into this Babylonian government. And Nebuchadnezzar was giving them big jobs, important, powerful positions. And so he got angry. He felt slighted. He went down there and he said, Boys, uh, did you all not bow down? And I'm going to paraphrase all this real quick because you've heard preachers preach this all your life. And it's an intriguing and powerful story that is very applicable to today. Just like the Bible is all the way through it. Every bit of it is applicable to us. There you got music playing out here now. And if you don't believe what they believe, if you don't talk the way they want you to talk, if you don't use the right terms, then you're going to be demeaned and demonized, outcast and just, uh, uh, just put down to the high heavens of this political correct stuff. But you can bow down if you want to, but I kind of want to be like old Hannah and I, Michelle and Hazariah, don't you? My name ain't Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I don't bow down to that false idol gold God you got because I've already bowed to the one true God who is Jehovah Yahweh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's who he is. <laughs> Same God now as he always will be the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so Nebuchadnezzar, I know, I, I promise you this. He said, boys, I've been good to you. Look what I'm doing for you. And now you all are embarrassing me here. Now I'm telling you, the law's done been said. If you don't bow down, you're going to burn up. This is an intimidation tactic. I know that. You all know that. But boys, that fire's real. You're going to burn up. And besides that, boys, you men of you reason and wisdom, where is that God that you're talking about? You better think, Shadrach. You who are like God, 